Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dears. In this video, we will be discussing the nature of semantic theories and three semantic theories, the ideational theory, the referential theory and the usage theory. So let's start with our lecture. Semantic theories explain the nature of meaning by utilizing a finite set of rules to explain a variety of semantic phenomena. Any theory of semantics should provide statements that explain meaning relationships such as ambiguity, anomaly, contradiction, tautology, paraphrase, entailment, synonymy, hyponymy, and others. This means that such a theory should be able to explain the inherent meaning characteristics of words and sentences. Any reliable theory of semantics should relate meaning to semantics apart from explaining meaning relationship. This relationship with syntax must highlight the relationship between the structures and meaning. This means that the rules of sentence construction and those of word meaning should relate to explain in full the meaning of the sentence. A viable semantic theory should also relate meaning to the context and situations of word and sentence usage for appropriate interpretation. There should also be a record of fact of meaning, linguistic reference and truth conditions. These requirements suggest that such a theory should be a part of the general linguistic theory. That means that semantic rules must have universal applications. Such rules must give clues to the nature of semantic features which distinguish lexical items of different languages of the world. Since the theory should account for meaning properties of all languages, it helps to explain the structure of all human languages. These expectations have been met at different levels by different theories of meaning including these three theories, ideational theory of semantics, referential theory and usage theory. Let's discuss these three theories. Ideational theory was developed by British empiricist philosopher John Locke. The theory explains that the meaning attached to words can be separated from the words themselves. This meant that meanings originates in the mind in the form of ideas. It is not something in the world, it is in the mind of the hearer or listener or speaker. Words are just sensible signs for the convenience of communication. Language is therefore a mechanism for expressing thoughts and thought is viewed as succession of conscious idea. The ideational theory or ideational theory is mentalistic theory. Thus the meaning of a word is a mental image or a concept or idea of a word are the expression generated in the mind of the speaker or hearer. There is no attempt to define words and expressions using physical associations. Rather, the range of possible meanings ascribed to a given word is that set up available feelings, images, ideas, concepts, thoughts and inferences that can be produced as soon as the word is heard by the user of a language. The theory is perceived to be abstract and emphasized because of dependence on mental image for decoding the meaning of words. Idea may be too vague to comprehend. There are also many words, especially the abstract, abstract ones, they do not have specific physical realities, let alone mental manifestation. It is unthinkable that mind can create an image of what the sense cannot perceive. The theory uh, may not be able to account for synonymous expressions. It may also be difficult to use the theory to explain the mental image conjured by sentences. Indeed, sentences derive their meanings more from the word or not from the words. The referential theory. This theory is associated with Ogden and Richard. According to the referential theory, the meaning of a word is the object it refers to in the external world. The actual object is referent. The connection between word and expressions and their referent is through the process of thought. The word or expressions are just symbols for them. The major criticism to this theory is that there are many words without physical objects they refer, they refer to. Such words are intelligent, ugly, rich, poor, which do not have the concrete qualities of reference. Again, polysemous words, words with more than one meaning, may have the additional problem to this referential theory. 
Items that belong to group may not have physical objects that are identical. Every subgroup has specific feature. Individual members of the smallest subgroup also have their identities. Therefore, we cannot talk about absolute identification of a reference. The referential theory may not have a way to explain the meaning of words and categories of adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and conjunctions. The usage theory, the last one, the German philosopher Wellington developed this theory. It has been elaborated by Firth and Halliday. The usage theory is also referred to as contextual or operational theory of meaning. The major motivation was fear that meaning of certain classes of words could be lost if meaning were treated as just entities. According to the theory, the meaning of a word or an expression is determined by the context where that word or expression is used. It is the effect created by a linguistic unit within a given context that expresses its full meaning. We have observed these different theories that provided a conscious framework for the analysis in semantics. Thank you so much.